1994, the world was gifted with one of the great movies. It was the story of a man who wasn't the sharpest knife in the drawer, but somehow landed himself in basically every major event in US history in the 1960s and 70s. He was a choreographer for Elvis the King. He was an all-American football player. He was a war hero, a ping pong champion, an ultra distance runner, a successful shrimp boat entrepreneur, a passionate groundskeeper, and perhaps one of the greatest investors to have ever lived through his very, very successful investment in a particular fruit company, which of course meant that he didn't have to worry about money no more. Of course, I'm talking about the 1994 movie Forrest Gump starring Tom Hanks and uh, being a big fan of Forrest Gump the movie as well as a student of investing, I, uh, I was really fascinated to dig into his investment in the fruit company, of course being Apple, and really try and figure out how successful that investment has been. If uh, Forrest Gump had held it since the 1970s when he was first invested in that particular fruit company by Lieutenant Dan, uh, if he'd held it all the way through to today in 2021, what would that Apple investment be worth? So I've gone back and I've read through all of the SEC filings around when Apple first went public in the 1980s. I've accounted for every dividend payment, every stock split, and in this video, I want to share that research of just how much money Forrest Gump would be worth uh, purely from that Apple investment if he still owned it today. So if you enjoy this video, be sure to hit like and also subscribe to the channel if you're new here. But uh, without further ado, let's get straight into the details of uh, the very famous fruit company investment from none other than Forrest Gump. Now the story here of course begins when Forrest Gump gets a letter in the mail. It's dated September 23rd, 1975, which as we'll talk about shortly is actually quite interesting because <laughs> Apple the company wasn't actually started until the next year in 1976 by Steve Jobs, uh, of course, and uh, the company wasn't actually incorporated until 1977, but we will get to that later. So uh, the letter reads, Mr. Forrest Gump, uh, River Road, Greenbow, Alabama. Dear investor, thank you for believing in our company. Your investment in our endeavor to make computers accessible to the ordinary citizen came at a time when investing in the consumer computer industry was thought to be folly. Your foresight, perspicaciousness, and most of all, your money has made it possible for our little company to become one of the leaders in the computer industry. It has also rewarded you with one of the most incredible investment returns in the history of modern finance. There are many new innovations soon to be introduced in our line of products, most notably the Lisa Personal computer which promises to be a huge success. Looking forward to our continued relationship, J. Wellington Big B, Chief Financial Officer, Apple Computer Incorporated. Now I must say that the most difficult part of putting the information together to record this video was not actually going back to the 1970s and 80s and going through the initial public offering documents and so on from Apple when they first went public. Uh, all of that is reasonably straightforward to put together. Uh, it takes a bit of time but all the information is sitting there. The most difficult part of trying to piece this puzzle together was really figuring out how much Forrest Gump may have invested in Apple in the first place. Uh, that number's not, I guess, disclosed in the movie. It's obviously, unfortunately, not a true story. Um, but here is what we do know. We do know that Forrest Gump got this letter from uh, Apple, uh, an investment that he was put into by uh, Lieutenant Dan, of course. He got this letter in 1975, uh, which, like I say, is... Uh, one year before the company was founded and two years before it was incorporated, so he got in particularly early. <laughs> and uh, we also know that Forrest Gump was already a millionaire. He was on the cover of Forbes. Uh, he'd had a very successful, of course, um, entrepreneurship journey from his Bubba Gump shrimp enterprise after a big, um, you know, weather event, hurricane basically wiped out all of the all of his competition. And uh, we know that he had a whole bunch of different, you know, genies uh, with his various boats and his shrimping empire kind of sitting around. So that is what we do know and we also know that you know this investment allowed Forrest Gump to not have to worry about money no more so we clearly know that it was a very significant part of his investment portfolio. 
So with that information in mind, here are a couple of the assumptions that I'm going to make to uh, go through and complete this case study. I'm going to assume that Forrest Gump's net worth in 1975 was at least a million dollars, it was likely much more. And I'm also going to assume that Lieutenant Dan put at least 10% of Forrest Gump's portfolio into Apple. So um, we're probably being quite conservative here, but we're going to assume that $100,000 was invested in Apple uh, pre-founding, <laughs> not just pre-IPO, but pre-founding, uh, by Lieutenant Dan. And um, I'm going to assume that that $100,000 allowed Forrest Gump to buy a 3% ownership in the company. So, um, you know, we're buying 3% for $100,000. That would imply about a $3,333,000 valuation for Apple uh, before it's even started. So I think that uh, is probably a reasonable assumption for us to make. Now with those assumptions and that background in mind, we can now really start to piece together the uh, performance of the Apple investment from uh, Mr. Forrest Gump. Now uh, we know that Apple went public in December of 1980 and opened at $22 per share uh, as the share price on the day of their IPO. And if we read some of the initial public offering documents from 1980 out of Apple, uh, this is what we know about the share count and how much money uh, Apple actually raised from the public when they first IPO'd. So we know that pre-IPO Apple had 50,215,332 shares outstanding and as part of the IPO they were actually raising a fairly modest amount of money. So they planned to issue 4 million new shares and they also had uh, an existing large investor uh, selling about 600,000 of their own shares. So although there were 4.6 million shares offered to the public on the day of the Apple Apple IPO, only 4 million of those were new. So if Forrest Gump still owned his 3% chunk of the company pre-IPO uh, with the initial share count of 50,215,332, that would mean that he is the proud owner of 1,506,460 shares at IPO. And of course he would get diluted down a bit when new shares are issued at the public offering. So his uh, percentage ownership would drop down a little bit from that initial 3%. But that was the stake that uh, Forrest Gump had in 1980. And interestingly, that stake would already be worth $33.1 million. So from 1975 to 1980, he's already gone from 100,000 to about 33.1 million, which just in case you're wondering, is a 219% compounded annual return uh, over that time frame. Now, if we want to fast forward through to 2021 and track what this investment is worth today for Forrest Gump, there are a couple of key things that we have, have to keep in mind. And the first one is that Apple has gone through a number of stock splits. So the initial 1.5 million shares that Forrest Gump owned, uh, he no longer will have 1.5 million shares. He will actually have a significantly larger number of shares because Apple's been sort of sliced into smaller and smaller ownership pieces over time. So uh, Apple has had its stock split five times since the company went public. The stock split on a four for one basis as recently as August 2020, seven for one in 2014, two for one in 2005, uh, 2000 and 1987. So if you take uh, the original share count, multiply that by four, again by seven, again by two and two and two, uh, that clearly multiplies the share count up quite a lot for Forrest Gump. So uh, I've done the maths for you here and he's gone from his initial uh, 1.5 million shares to 337,447,040 shares. And because of these stock splits, that's why when you go back and look at the Apple stock price uh, on a stock chart today, if you you know go all the way back to the 1980s, you won't actually see that initial $22 share price. It'll look more like about 10 cents uh, split adjusted uh, for, for that IPO price. So uh, now the maths becomes reasonably straightforward. We have a, a number of shares that Forrest Gump owns. And as of recording this video, the share price is about 171 uh, US dollars per share. So if we take the 337,447,040 shares that Forrest Gump owns, multiply that by our $171 share price, that gives us a current value for Forrest Gump's Apple investment, assuming he's not sold a single share the entire time, of $57.7 billion. And just to put into perspective uh, how massive of a number that is the $57 billion stake in Apple for Forrest Gump, if we completely forget his shrimp boat empire 
and we completely forget any other investments that he may have made, uh, that Apple stake alone would currently place him at about the 20th or 21st richest person in the world. Uh, if I look at the current Forbes global billionaire list, that would actually place him right behind Michael Bloomberg, who has a net worth at the moment of about $59 billion. And luckily here for Forrest Gump, that is actually not the final piece of the puzzle when it comes to uh, his Apple investment. Of course, uh, any keen stock market investors will know that there are two ways basically that you can make money in, in stock market investments. The first one is from the share price just going up over time, which is clearly, you know, Apple has had an exceptional run in that department. But secondly, you can also have the company pay dividends. If uh, Apple makes a profit, which they've done a lot of that over time, and they have no really great use for that for that money for that that cash that's kind of lying around if they have no great use for investing that in the business they often pay that out to shareholders and uh, since Forrest Gump is clearly a very large shareholder in Apple he has benefited really handily from dividends over the years so uh, let's go through and do some of the maths and show you some of the history in terms of what Gump would have received from dividend payments from Apple now Apple actually started paying dividends fairly early in their run as a public company so they paid their first dividend in 1987 uh, in the second quarter of 1987 in fact and they paid about six cents per share now uh, this has had you know back a few stock splits and so on so I've done all sort of the maths there um, but basically they paid growing dividends from about 1987 through to 1995 and I'll put the numbers up on the screen here so that you can see exactly how much Forrest Gump was getting paid uh, both each quarter and sort of total for each of those years but it ranged anywhere from $600,000 right through to about $1.5 million. But from 1996 through to about 2011, Apple actually completely stopped paying dividends altogether. But they did uh, kick that off again coming around in 2012. And by that stage, of course, Apple had grown enormously since they last paid a dividend in the 90s. And uh, again, I'll put up on the screen here some of the dividend payments that Forrest Gump would theoretically be getting from this Apple investment. And the numbers are starting to get very, very large. So when Apple started paying a dividend again uh, in 2012, he was getting about $32 million a quarter. So they paid a dividend for two quarters in that particular year comes out at about 63 64 million dollars and again I'll put the numbers on the screen here so you can see them because they are pretty mind-boggling <laughs> in 2021 he would have been paid uh, about 69 million dollars in dividends in the first quarter and for the last uh, three quarters of 2021 he would have been paid about 74 million dollars in dividends and if we add up the entirety of the dividend payments for uh, you know all of the time that Forrest Gump has held this Apple investment that comes out to just a slither under two billion dollars. So I really hope you enjoyed that story. This was a fun one to put together. Uh, Forrest Gump is actually my favorite movie ever. So I really enjoyed doing the research on this one. Uh, let me know what you think of it down in the comments. Uh, is Forrest Gump the greatest investor of all time? Is he better than Warren Buffett? Is he better than Charlie Munger? Or is it in fact Lieutenant Dan, the man behind the scenes who actually put Forrest into the Apple investment in the first place? Let me know what you think. And if you enjoyed the video, of course, please hit like and also subscribe to the channel. That would be much appreciated. But that's it for me for this one, and I'll see you in the next video. Cheers.